Now if you see this branch here, this branch actually starts way down here at this bottom section. I don't want it, so we're going to have to eliminate it totally. It's a straight growing branch and it emanates from way down here, not part of the upper portion of the canopy. So it's got to go completely. So we're going to completely eliminate that branch. This is a dead branch. I can go ahead and bring it down considerably. Woo! Watch out for that. Okay. Let's spin it around and take a look at some more. Let's take a look at the back side of the tree here that I saw as a potential front of the tree initially. And it still could possibly be a front. We're just going to have to do some th uh, root grafting to get a decent nabari on this side of the tree. So I always want to make those considerations no matter when I'm doing my design on the tree. So I've reduced quite a bit on the back side of the tree. We need to look at this side of the tree now as well. Uh, we have a really large main growing trunk right here that goes up. It does have a considerable amount of dead on it, so we're going to eliminate all of that as we're going as well. Uh, let's see, we have... It does do a, a nice split here. It goes from one to four, and then from four to two, and then two to one. I don't need all of that, so we're going to have to choose one or the other, and I've made my decision. I'm keeping the smaller, weaker branch of the two, and I'm eliminating the stronger branch. And that will create the taper that we're after, as well as reduce the height of the tree in total. Okay, now we've got some fairly large branches to attend to here on this portion of the tree. The main trunk comes up and splits to three, off into three sections and those three sections split off again into three and four sections but one of them is the dominant and that's this one here and it is very very large and kind of unsightly for an overall bonsai design so I'm thinking of possibly eliminating it completely because on the opposite side of it over here I have another branch that's emanating down farther on the trunk that I can use. This is going to kind of be tricky because I'm going to need to get in here with my saw. And in order to get in here with my saw I'm going to have to be very careful. This branch right here is pretty much dead. It's been shaded out so much that it has died almost completely. I'm going to remove it and I'm going to show you what I'm talking about here. What happens with these trees is they get so dense that they shade portions off. And as you can see, I'm going to say all of this branch with the exception of this one here is completely dead. So we're talking about one, two, three, four main, well, main and tertiary branches that are completely dead with the exception of this one where you can see the green growth here. And, and that's what happens when these things get shaded out. They just completely and totally die. And then you're stuck with this. Then you've got this unsightly bulbous area here. And yeah, it'll back bud, but we, we, we need to try to eliminate these if we can. So we just remove those right now because we we've got plenty more to work with in that same area. And of course, right here in this same whole area, it's very congested. There's quite a lot of dieback and dead branching because of how thick this area is with foliage. It's just some of these get shaded out and they don't grow and they die and the tree compartmentalizes that throughout the growing season. There's a completely dead branch right there as well we need to eliminate. Here. Alright, let's keep going up the tree here. What to do about this branch? Kind of taking my time thinking about it because I don't necessarily want to remove it hastily. I wish I didn't later because it is a major portion of that side of the tree. I'm pretty confident that I'm going to be able to create what I need to as far as canopy is concerned 
with the remainder of the branches that are here. Although this one doesn't look real healthy, it's got quite a bit of dead on it. I'm sure that it'll it'll pop out this spring. It'll do just fine. It's dead all the way back here. I mean, that's a tough decision to make. It is in the back for now, and I do have something to replace it, and I can kind of hide the wound. I think we're going to go ahead and eliminate that branch altogether. I'm going to cut it from this side here, I believe. Do. I'm going to remove some of it, but I'm going to keep some of it for an option. And I see there's a couple things that I'm going to kind of need to move around with some wire in there and put them in their proper position. So it's going to act twofold. Number one, I'm going to reduce it three quarters of this main branch here, which is going to allow a lot of light in to, for us to develop a better canopy in the long run. But number two, it's a fairly large branch. It's probably inch, inch and a half inch and a quarter in diameter and I'm going to use it to tie a wire around to bend some branches into position that need to be in a different position inside the in interior of this tree. Let me go ahead and grab my saw and get in here where I can get a good cut at it without damaging any of the branches which I think is going to be right through here we're going to go ahead and remove this branch. Got my back cut made. And I'm going to have to get this one with the small saw. Because it doesn't look like I'm going to be able to get in there with the big saw without running the risk of damaging a bunch of other branches. You do need to be fairly careful on these Japanese maples, especially this species as well, because the branches do not bend as much as some of the other Japanese maple species. And being that we just had a big snowstorm down here in South Carolina, they're not they're not actually frozen, but they're kind of brittle. Because it's starting to get to the point where the sap's going to start rising. These trees are going to start putting on growth for this season. really really thick main branch and there are some other ones in the area that are smaller that are going to give us a better taper in the long run so that's why we eliminate it and look at the amount of light that that brings in 
to the rest of the canopy, which is going to allow the rest of that canopy to back bud and to create those smaller twigs of twiggy growth that we're after. All right, back to the pruners. This one here is too large for where it is on the tree. So we'll eliminate it back down to some lower stuff. That one's not too bad. Let's take a look at this one over here. Again, this tree is going to look very barren in the canopy. But I'm anticipating quite a bit of back budding. And I'm going to need to eliminate a lot of this in order to allow the roots to be able to keep up with the growth. It's kind of a two-fold mission here. going through here and looking to see what's what and if there's a place that I can cut back to some smaller twigs down low on the branch that's what I'm doing so we've got to rein this baby in I don't necessarily like that whole cluster there we're gonna to have to do some removal of some things bring some things over into different locations Now what I've got going on with the rest of this canopy here is I've got a lot of branches in this one area here. They are going to need to come back, but what I want to do is try to figure out where I need to position them on the tree. So this thing's going to look like it's got a spider web of wires on the inside of it when we get finished because of the things that we're going to need to do to move these into position. Let me go ahead and you've seen quite a bit of what I'm currently doing to the tree. I'm going to go ahead and continue that and I'm going to get it to a state where we're ready for the next step, which is going to be wiring the main branches into position. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Okay, folks, we're back. Uh, due to some current time restraints I have right now, I'm losing some daylight. My wife wants to go run some errands and go see a movie. I had to do some of this work really fast. I'm not 100% complete with this tree at the moment. Um, we may revisit this tree here in a little while, maybe springtime. Uh, this is where we are. As you can see, the canopy has been drastically reduced, but it still has quite a bit. It's, it's more realistic for the scale of the tree that I'm trying to create. Uh, a lot of the top has been extremely reduced as well as some of the branches down low also. What you want to do is you want to um, follow a branch from the base to the end and you want the twigging in the branch itself to progressively get smaller the farther it goes out. And a lot of times you'll find on trees like this you'll have a split and you'll have a dominant branch that comes out and then you'll have a weaker subordinate branch. Well you cut that dominant branch off and keep the subordinate branch because that gives you that taper hereafter. The entire top of this tree is completely open for light, so there's going to be a lot of light getting to the top of this tree. I'm going to get a ton of back budding, exploding. Maybe not this year. This year we'll probably just kind of branch out and leaf out and do its thing to develop its root base since its root base has been taken back so far. But the following year, it's just going to explode with growth, and that's when we're going to start getting our ramification that we need to build up. Let's go ahead and do a quick 360 here for you, and we'll revisit this tree on the Journey to My Benches series. 
a later, little bit later on this year. Um, like I said, I apologize due to the time constraints that I have right now. I don't really have enough time to dedicate to shooting a proper video on this tree, but you can see and get the gist of what I'm after. Somewhere right around there is what I see as the potential front of this tree. Again, thanks for your views, thanks for your comments, thanks for your support, and we'll be back with another video as soon as we can. Thank you.